Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Michal Stashkiewicz and uh, I work in Cilio, basically with Ember.js and Node.js stuff. And today I want to present you some optional and upcoming features that already, uh, already landed or will land in the nearest future in the Ember.js ecosystem. So uh, there should be uh, display some agenda, but unfortunately, or like always, the presentation was created in the fly, so we can start already with the one of the most legendary RFCs in the Ember.js community. So model, module unification. Uh, who heard about module unification in Ember? OK, so this is legendary. And it landed in Ember 3.1 under the feature flag. So maybe I first talk something about what is the module unification. So maybe every one of you know this before structure of the Ember application. So we have components, controllers, routes, etc. But after this huge RFC that that takes some years to discuss. Uh, the Ember community created new file structure for the Ember, and it looks like this one on the right side. It's much simpler the resolving uh, paradigm is changed also. The, if you uh, didn't use it before, uh, I highly recommend to read the full RFC and know it, because this is the way in which the Ember community is going, and we need to go with these rules also. So uh, it landed in 3.1, but in which way we can use it? So when we are creating new Ember application, uh, we need to specify those two feature flags and set it to true module unification and Ember CLI module unification. And after that, the new Ember app will be structured in the new way. But there is a one gotcha. If you are generating some routes, components, or other stuff, you always need to put the Ember CLI module unification flag to true. So I highly recommend to create another NPM or YARN script to avoid mistakes. And like you can see in the new structure, the test is by default is placed together with the component and the template. For me, it's cool, but there are always some pros and cons. So you need to decide where you want to put your test files or other stuff. Uh, if you want to read more, you can click this link and read the RF uh, RFC. I highly recommend it, like I said before because this is changing the way in which we are developing the Ember applications. OK, another one, my favorite one, uh, angle bracket components. So if somebody used React before, it's really, really similar to the React. So before we had this uh, curly braces, handlebar syntax, so double braces, component name, and some other props. And after the angle bracket uh, landed, we can use it like this. So the convention is uppercase, and all every attribute that we are passing to the component uh, should start with the add sign, and everything should work fine with that. And how we can use this new cool syntax? Uh, since Ember 3.4, so it will be released, I think, in the next week or in next two weeks, I don't remember. But it will be enabled by default, so we can just type our component name and use it. But the Ember community is really strong, and if you want to use this new cool feature, you can use it since Ember 2.12. So it's I think over 10 versions behind, and we can still use this new feature. Uh, we need to install the polyfill and enable Glimmer angle bracket invocation flag. And after that, we can use the new angle bracket uh, syntax also in the legacy Ember applications. 
there is a link for the RFC, so you can click, read about it. There are also uh, another information because this new syntax is, uh, have some limitations, and uh, it's cool to know that. Okay, so the next one, always when I meet some React guys, they always saying, okay, but in Ember you don't have ECMAScript classes. Why? We have. So if you want to use the Ember uh, as classes and decorators, this is the old syntax component. So like we can see there's component extent and just object that we pass to the extent method. But in Ember, we can use also the native ECMAScript classes with some add-on. And like you can see, we are creating just another extended class and uses the collateral for services, computed properties, actions, and there is a lot of decorators that implement every computer component feature. So it's much clearer for me. We can compare it. This is the old one. This is the new one. The amount of code is uh, quite the same, but I think that this code is much simpler. So if you want to use this feature, we need to install Ember Decorators add-on because this feature is implemented through the add-on. So if you want to use it, just click the link and there is a guide how to install it and uh, what else. Uh, we need also set up linter and some other stuff. Everything is described in this repository. And there is the documentation link. Okay, another cool feature is Custom Component Manager. It's low-level API. Uh, I don't have an example of that because this is mostly for core team to developing new way in uh, components are rendered. With this manager, we can implement our own lifecycle component methods. And also, it's really powerful for add-on makers because they can now create custom components. There is a one project uh, uh, that get my attention. It's called uh, Recycled Components, and it gives us possibility to reuse unrendered components without the new memory allocations. So it can speed up the the way in which we are rendering another component after the co previous component was unmount. But everything is described in this RFC. If you want to use it, we need to specify this Glimmer Custom Component Manager to true, or in Ember 3.4, it will land it by default. And there is the link for this RFC, so you can click it, read about it, and everything is there. Uh, another cool stuff that landed in Glimmer explicitly uh, even a few months ago is in element helper. It gives us possibility to render uh, one, one, whatever we want in other place in the DOM. So it's perfect for rendering models or stuff like that, popovers. Uh, but this syntax is not yet available in the Ember.js. It should land in 3.4, but there are some still some gotchas and talks about how it should look like, etc. But you, you can use it with, via the private API. I don't recommend it, but if somebody wants this feature, it's available from Ember 3.0, and we need just put the dash in the front of the name of this helper, and it works fine. There is the discussion about this feature. People still are commenting there, so we have hoped that this will land in the next release of the Ember. Okay, and I also collected some stuff that already, land, already landed in 3.1. Uh, this one is really awesome because we don't need to use the get helper anymore. We can just simply get the value using this dot syntax. Uh, another one is named arguments. Uh, this feature maybe on first looks it's it don't 
give us anything, but it simplifies the way in which Ember community can learn new, new developers because it explains from where the property comes, comes. And we can also use it now because it landed in 3.1. And there is a special add-on Ember optional features. It's developed by the core team and it gives us possibility to test the new things that maybe will land in Ember, but this is just experimental stuff. And now there are two uh, major things there in this uh, release channel. Uh, template only Glimmer components, so uh, Ember now always is doing something like uh, the wrapper div over the content of the uh, component, but with this feature flag, it will render just pure Glimmer component, which is really fast. So if you have problem with rendering a long list or a lot amount of data, you can try use this template only Glimmer components and speed up the things but we need to install it through this uh, optional features add-on and then you, we can use it. And the last one, but not least, there is an application template wrapper. And we all know that Ember always, when is, uh, the Ember is mounting the application, uh, he always create another div for the application. With this stuff, we can uh, remove this div. So, Ember just will just render the things in in the body or other element that we specified in our in our environment js uh, and I forgot about one more thing there is no slide for it there is a, a ember CLI auto import if you are using uh, some external modules uh, now you don't need to create any any shims or uh, we don't need to add them to Ember CLI build. We can just install Ember CLI auto import and the add-on will make all the stuff for us. And it, sh it, it should land in Ember in 3.5, I think. So it will be in the core Ember. And that's all. If you have any questions, I will be drinking beer after the presentation so you can come to me and ask. So thank you.